In this video, I talk about how to improve a really bad listing on Amazon. We're going to use one of these sub niches as an example. And my point in this video is to show you that the most common reason why your product might not be selling well is actually stuff to do with the listing itself, with the way you've launched the product, with the way you're promoting the product. It's not the product itself. People assume when they launch a product and it's not making any sales, there's something wrong with the product. The reviews are not good enough. It's just a really bad product selection. But that's not always the case. And I'll show you a few examples of that. But remember, if your product's not selling, that's the last reason. You have to rule out all of the other reasons why you're not shifting this particular product. And then the last reason is, it's just a bad product selection. The product is not good for the particular market that you're in. So we'll go through that together right now. So what I decided to use for this example is dog leads and we'll do a sub niche. So I just typed into amazon.co.uk dog leads and one of the auto suggestions was dog leads for large dogs. So we'll do that one as an example. Now, what we're gonna have a look at first is we're going to go on Helium 10 because I wanna get an idea of the niche in terms of revenue, who's doing well in this niche, who's not doing very well. That's what I'm looking at first. So we're here at the top of the uh, first page, ignore the ones with SP next to them, those are sponsored ads. So we actually wanna look at the organic ranked products, the ones that are doing very good healthy revenue figures as you can see here. Now, what I'm interested in is, what is a, a really good listing in this niche? Often what you might assume is the one making the most revenue is the best listing in the niche, but that's not true at all. Because if they've been selling for a lot longer, their listing is kind of baked in the Amazon algorithm, so they already pop up for any, all kinds of related searches just because they've been selling a lot longer and the product's been doing well, it's got loads of sales history. So a way around that is basically you list everything by revenue going down, and then what you want to look at is the review count. And what I'm interested in is those listings that are doing good revenue, like this one, 38,000, but has less reviews, 36 reviews as an example. And this, is, this makes up product research as well. Now, if I scroll even further down, I can see there's a listing here that only has eight reviews already doing 6,000 in revenue, which is very good. So these are potentially good products as well in the niche, but also they might be doing something else in terms of the way they've launched, their listing quality, how they promoted the product, that will be making a massive difference. So let's have a look at them first before we have a look at the really bad listings and let's see how we can actually improve things. Now, this is one of them. This is Fur Dreams. Now, I've never heard of this brand myself, but this potentially, it could be a well-known brand as well. So what I tend to do with these, if I was doing kind of full research here, is I would actually look this up on Google as well, just to see if they're a well-known brand, they're selling their products in other pet stores and other websites as well, not just Amazon. So they're not purely an Amazon FBA product. Because that's important, because people will type into the search bar, Fur Dreams Dog Leash, and that's why the revenue figure will appear inflated. For example, if I type in Fur Dreams, you can see that people are searching for Fur Dreams Dog Crate, for example. So it might be a better known listing. The other way to check is often they don't, chen, uh, these massive brands, they don't tend to be Chinese sellers. It tends to be someone from the UK or the EU or sometimes the US who have well-known brands selling everywhere, not just on Amazon. And in terms of the actual listing itself, the reviews are average, they're not great. The uh, pictures are okay, description looks okay. So it's nothing special in terms of the listing itself. That's what makes me think it's a kind of better known brand. But the other one we saw, so this was the one with just eight reviews. Not great in terms of reviews, it's certainly not five stars. It's had a one star review and some four star ones as well. So mixed, price point is good. But in terms of the actual product itself, it's making good sales. And if you have a look at it, the quality of the images are very good. It explains clearly, it differentiates, it has different sizes available as well on the listing. But you have to be careful when it has different variations as well because that will inflate the revenue. Because the revenue will include then the large dog leash, small and medium as well. Anyway, let's get back on to some medium and bad listings so we can see why there's such a discrepancy in terms of revenue figures. Because if you, if you look at them, even the ones with better revenue, the reviews aren't amazing. I'm here now doing the same search again, but I'm actually down on page three and I'm gonna pick some random listings that are doing low kind of revenue figures, but not the ones with no reviews or one or two reviews, because they've obviously just launched. I want some that ha actually have quite a few reviews, preferably good reviews, just to see what the issue might be. So again, I'm looking at the review count here, and I'm looking at the revenue figures. So let's see if we can find one. So I'm seeing a few here, but there's one here, for example, Tiding, revenue of 178, review count of 22, so decent review count, and 
The rating 4.3, so not too bad, not horrifically bad, but not great either. And they were launched in 2020. So they've been going for about a year with this listing. So let's have a look at the listing. So this one, again, it's got a couple of different options, but immediately one thing I noticed is the price point is quite high. For some reason, they've got a price point in kilograms as well. So they need to have a look at the listing there, edit the listing and see what's happened there. Um, in terms of whether they've just added too many extra options, in terms of uh, weight and further information about the product. Because that looks very strange and it's right next to the price point. I, I know it sounds like a small, simple thing, but these things can make a difference. Uh, you know, a person could be looking at the price there and thinking, what does this mean? My dog's five kilos, what, <laughs> what does this mean in terms of actual cost? Now, looking at the, the uh, main keywords here, again, this is a, a gray area, but generally, uh, you can still get away, uh, in my opinion, with getting the brand name right at the uh, end and put by tiding and actually put the main keywords at the front. But again, it's gray area. Generally, Amazon are moving towards brand name right at the front or they might force you to do that on your listing. So don't worry too much about that. But looking at this, genuine leather is not going to be a very important w uh, keyword in this niche at all. It should be something like, if you look at the better listings here, it should be retractable dog lead. In fact, actually this guy's or this guy or girl has done really well with this listing. Because if you look at this, you see, they, I don't even think they put the brand name in the title. Retractable dog lead. That's going to be one of the best keywords for this niche. Put it right there at the beginning. Amazon are more likely to index you. Everything else being even. Let's say you had the same reviews as everybody else. It was the exact same product, same price. Everything is the same. If you're the one who puts retractable dog lead at the beginning, nobody else does. Yours will be at the top. Simple as that. All these little things add up to make a massive difference on your listing. And then they've got other important, um, I imagine this was not important, extendable will be. So that might be one people are searching. Heavy duty will likely be. Dog leash, obviously. Anti-slip, very likely. Reflective, very likely. In fact, this one's very well customized. It's got a lot of extra things. And in the title, it immediately explains exactly what the features are of the product. So actually, this is a very good listing. If you think about it, it's very simple because most people that are ordering on mobile, all they'll see is a title and they'll see the uh, images here. And on your images here, you can see it explains exactly how to use the product. And it explains a little bit about the sizes uh, in terms of the uh, product, what size of dog is suitable. And a little bit more about um, problems you could have potentially with the product or the way it actually works, the retractable nature of the product, etc. Very, very simple, very easy. So I really like this one. This is a, actually a very, very good listing because it's all well and good doing really good 3D rendered images that look very fancy and stuff. But if it doesn't help sell the product, if it doesn't explain to your customer why it's useful, why it's better than the others, then what is the point? Now, this primary image is not the best, to be honest with you, either. This looks like a, a real image. I mean, it's a very basic looking uh, a product, if I'm honest. It just looks like a massive training uh, leash more than anything else. Um, so I think it's probably overpriced, to be honest with you. But looking at this, I can bear, how are you gonna see that writing if you're looking on mobile and you have a very small screen, especially if you have an old, not very good mobile phone, you won't be able to read that. And is that even important? Oxidation, blackening, I don't know if that's very, very important when it comes to a dog leash. And some of these other images as well, again, they're not great, they don't really stand out. And some of the English is not uh, great either, won't tear your hands, for example, That's that doesn't sound very good if you're a customer here in the UK. Um, so yeah, it's not a great listing, but if you look further down, the next place to check is the bullet features. The one you don't wanna really worry too much about is here. I mean, they've actually got brand registry. So this is A plus content. But most people, they don't tend to really look at this that much. It tends to be the images nowadays, title, what's the price, and maybe a quick quick read through these uh, bullet feature points, these bullet points here. Now, these are very, very long. Um, I'm, I can't see many, many important keywords here. Again, retractable dog lead, that's an important keyword. Is it mentioned here in a phrase anywhere, retractable dog lead? I'm looking through and I can't see that. I can see dog leash alone, but I can't see that. And I would put that here, retractable dog lead dash, then explain the product. For example, 
I could add more promotions to it. They've added a little voucher, probably because they're struggling that much with making sales, which is fine, but they could add a sales price to it. They could add a promotion where you buy two, get 10, 20% off. So many other things you could do here. And if you look, the reviews are not bad, 4.3. The reviews on the other listing we saw were much worse. So these are the initial things I would actually start with. And then I would look at the business reports and see What's the conversion rate on this listing anyway? Are they still converting one in every four page visits? If they are, it's a promotion issue. They need to get this in front of more eyes. They need to do the index better, the keywords better. Then they need to run PPC, aggressive PPC, but focused on important keywords, not just random PPC with no goal, um, no plan in mind. That doesn't work. That's how you end up draining your money on Amazon with promotions. The other thing I'd mention is, it's very likely their profit margins are good on this. So they could actually be more aggressive with PPC. They could literally spend a hundred pounds on PPC or 200, maybe even a day or every two, three days, and they could be making profits. And as long as they're making profits per item, they should crank it up and spend as much on PPC as possible until you get that to, get to that level where you're kind of reaching the top level in that niche when it comes to the amount of revenue you could, you could make for this particular product. So let me know if this was useful for you. Please comment below if you'd like more videos of this style where I actually look at really good listings, really bad listings, and show you what you need to do to improve or reasons why products don't sell on Amazon or aren't selling. Don't assume there's something wrong with the product. That should be the last scenario. Go through everything else first. It's very likely, especially if you're new, you're making a mistake elsewhere. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell icon, and that way you'll get notified when I release new videos as well. Thanks for listening.